Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the Play Arts Kai Arkham Origins Batman figure. This figure is, I'm just going to say right off the top, it's very nicely done. Uh, it doesn't do a lot of things really well. There are a few issues that I will point out. Um, but there's also some things that are really worth noting that are quite good. So let's go ahead and get into the review. Let's bring the camera back just a little bit. His height, he's not standing perfectly square right now, but he's eh, about ten and a half inches tall. You can see the legs are out just a little bit, a little bit bend to him. So he's probably, well, a little bit taller. Let's see, what did I say, ten and a half? Yeah, so he's probably closer to eleven once you stiffen him up and he's definitely got some bulk to him he definitely has that origins padded look which is fine by me the only complaint i have in terms of the aesthetic of the figure uh, not not counting paint or anything like that his abdominal section occasionally looks a bit pot bellied and you may not be able to tell in the video uh, if you get one in person having him stand straight on just the way this joint kind of sits on this top piece sits on top of the bottom piece and the way these two are sculpted it gives him every once in a while a bit of a beer gut type effect but it's definitely not an issue I would worry about it's just something that you may notice depending on how you have him posed so it's not a huge deal and before we get into the rest of the figure let's look at the accessories we have a total of two fist hands pretty standard we have two jazz hands as I call them which are just the dynamic looking posed hands open fingers and then we have one pick your nose hand or if you want to use it for the accessories that's fine also you can put the batarang in here still not a dedicated batarang hand which is a little disappointing but it'll work I would hold it that way but you can have him hold it that way it just doesn't look as good and then we also have the grapnel gun it's all one piece no, I mean, it's been glued together, but it's all one piece now, so that's not coming out. It's not hinged or anything. Uh, let's see how he holds it. I suspect quite well, but I haven't tried yet, so it's a first time for both of us. Let's uh, let's see if we can get this in his hand. I'm not sure how this bulky part... Eh, it's not, it's not great. He holds it fine from that side, but his finger's not really on the trigger because of the fat cylindrical part. But he holds it okay. I mean, it's not enough to complain about by any means. So that's fine. Not a big deal. So that's it for accessories. The Batarang itself, not quite as nicely detailed as we've seen in the past. It does have a bit of a silver edge to it, but if you don't shine a light on it, it doesn't really stand out that much because the rest of the plastic's a little bit lighter. It does have a nice wear effect, though. As you can see, the little silver spots, that's intentional. And then the sculpt work is well done, so I do like it. Now, on to the figure itself. The paint on this guy, we've had some issues with glossiness on some of the Batman figures. Some of the faces are glossy, some parts of the armor are glossy. This one looks like they finally got it right. All of the armored bits are kind of this satiny finish. I don't know if you can kind of tell there's a sheen to it. Then we have a little bit more gloss on the Bat logo, a little bit more gloss on the metal parts, and then the face is a nice flat color. No issues at all with the skin. Looks really good. The eyes have gloss to them. And the cool thing about this, let's see if you can see it. And I don't think I'm going to be able to... Yep, you can see it. You can see right through. If you look in the eyepiece, you can see right through to the backdrop. Hopefully it showed up on camera. That's because the eyes are actually a separate piece of plastic on the inside. And that gives it a really nice, realistic, deep looking eye socket and it looks really really good then the paint on the face is really well done you can see all the stubble and the lips are painted and it just looks really nice it might be a little stylized as the play arts tend to be even when they're not really stylized uh, but it still looks great and I'm still pr quite happy with it uh, as far as the rest of the paint goes we do get some nice gray shading throughout grays and dark grays and blacks you can see them particularly on these parts here the only real complaint I have with the paint is that we do get this kind of bronze color going on in the armor and even up here and through the bicep. It's the same on this side. And I'm pretty sure there was no bronze in the game, especially on the boots. You can see that it definitely has some color there that I'm not sure is supposed to be there. I think it's more black and steel looking rather than this color. And it does that kind of almost purplish bronze shading ever so slightly carries over onto the top part of the cape and then even down here onto this. It's nicely shaded, but that color I'm not sure belongs. 
That being said, it's easy to overlook because the figure does look really good otherwise. Let's go through the articulation and see what we can see. Now the head, pretty standard. The neck moves around really well, so that's a nice bonus. A lot of the times the neck doesn't accomplish too much. This one does. It gives him a really nice organic look. You can look all the way up all the way down, no problem at all. So at least a single ball peg, maybe even a double at the bottom. Definitely a double ball peg here. You can see it in there if you don't tuck it back so that you don't see it. It's definitely obvious, but it's not enough to worry about because who's gonna have him stand like that anyway? So you can give him a real nice natural look in the neck, so that's good. This is really soft, we'll come back to it, but for now I just care about the shoulder. It doesn't get in the way of the shoulder. This is a bit of a new shoulder joint for us. Hopefully you can see in there, there is no butterfly on this figure. There's no butterfly joint at all. That's one solid piece inside underneath the armored part, which by the way, this whole outer part of the figure is a layer on top of the inner plastic skeleton. So that's a little bit different. Um, you can see it moves around without the neck moving. Uh, that can be a problem, but once you get the figure situated, it shouldn't really be an issue. But back to the shoulder. So for the shoulder now, we have a ball hinge just like the elbow, and that pegs downward and then into the bicep. So we have the butterfly joint this way now. It's still is essentially the same thing. It's just a new design. It's a really hollowed out arm, but the way the shoulder kind of fills that in, it works. Sometimes there's a gap, as you can see here, but you can still get the good range of motion out of it and it works just fine. So that's ratcheted this way. It's a really loose ratchet. Not too loose, but it is loose. It does give him more of an organic look from most angles, so I'm okay with it. Uh, this seems to be the first time they've done this, at least the first time I've seen, so I'm, I'm guessing they will perfect it as they go, but I'm still pretty happy with the uh, first iteration of this new joint. Gives us pretty good articulation. And then we do get a bicep swivel. It's really stiff on this guy, so be careful when you're using it, but we do have a really nice, well-hidden bicep swivel at the top of the bicep. Standard elbows for play art, nothing new. Swivel here, swivel here. Ratcheted hinge in between, so that's fine. The armor is really nice and soft, so that's not gonna get in the way of the articulation. These guys right here aren't gonna break off. And then we have the standard ball hinge for the wrist, swivel in the forearm, swivel in the hand, ratcheted hinge in between. We do have the double ball peg for the diaphragm joint, which gives us a really good range of motion backwards which isn't really what we want. We want it to come forward. It doesn't come that far forward, that's about it. So no ab crunch really on this guy, but you can lean him from side to side and swivel. And then we have the single ball peg for the lower torso. Doesn't have the greatest range of motion, but it is still there. You can still lean from side to side. That's about the same, but doesn't come all that far forward. Still pretty good though, not too bad. And we, of course, we have the waist swivel there. For the hips, same hips we've seen a bunch of times. So they're ratcheted from side to side, pretty good range. Ratcheted forward and back, again, pretty good range. We have a thigh swivel there. And now here's where we really have some good news. The shoulder's pretty good news, but the knees, man, oh man, I've been talking about the knees on Play Arts since I started buying Play Arts. They finally fixed the knees. Oh my goodness, Play Arts, Square Enix, thank you for fixing the knees. Your figures have been great for a long time, but with good knees, they are even better. Let's look at this knee. Look at how non-ugly that is. It's so much more natural looking. We still get a bit of kibble, if you want to call it that, in the joint itself. Uh, they may still, you know, clean this up. Like I said, we're seeing some new stuff here, so give it a little bit of time to fully integrate. But oh my goodness, that's just the one joint. The other joint, just like a Marvel Legends figure, you get that really clean looking double hinged knee. So well done, so effective. The leg goes all the way back, looks really good. I'm telling you guys, I couldn't be happier that they finally fixed the knees. If this carries over to the Halo 2 Master Chief, I will be just splendidly pleased with these figures. And then the ankle, pretty much standard ball hinge, just like the wrist, swivel at the top, swivel in the foot, hinged in the middle. You can spin it around to get an ankle rocker out of it. This is nice and soft, so it won't get in the way, so that is much appreciated. And we have a new type of toe hinge, which is really just like a giant hinge. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's not the best looking hinge, and it's not very sturdy, so it's not gonna be that useful, but it is there. He has what appears to be generic looking soles on the bottom of his feet, but that's okay. Still a really good figure, and as you can see, the sculpt work, all the detail throughout is really nice. 
Now, it's just a really cool looking figure. Let's look at the cape. We have a new design for the cape as well, and it's a good concept. I'm not sure it was executed as well as it could have been, so again, we'll see how this kind of design continues to develop as they go on. This cape, kind of similar to what we've seen. There's no shoulder hinge this time, probably because it doesn't droop over the shoulder as much and that's how it was in the game, so that's fine. This piece is super soft and floppy, really, really soft, so that's not gonna get in the way of any articulation. We do have these standard hinges in the cape here, but now we have hinges in the cape itself. So aside from the cape being able to split apart and be a really big, cool looking cape, so you can see, got a, a whole lot of cape going on here, and it looks awesome, really good cape. Now these hinges can allow for the cape to kind of wrap around in the front a little bit more or to flail out a little bit more, which is a really good concept, but I think the way they're split at the top and because of the curve, when you flail them out, they stick out in an unnatural way and this can't hide that. So it doesn't look that great unless you keep it curled in and then that can hide it more. So it's a really good concept. The execution maybe gets a seven out of 10. I think they will develop that more and make it a lot better, but it's definitely not bad for what it is, for being the first time we're seeing it. I like that they're trying new things and that they're trying to improve the figures. And this figure is definitely an improvement over a lot of the other things we've seen. It's a really high quality figure. It's not perfect, but I definitely, definitely recommend it to any Batman fan. And just while we're here for the record, this would be a perfect look, a perfect realistic look for Batman in a movie. I was not a fan of the Christian Bale suit. Let's not even get into the movies themselves, but the suit, this is it. This would make a great movie suit. So hopefully the uh, Ben Affleck suit has at least a little bit of this more kind of retro looking padding and armor because I think it suits Batman really well. Anyway, back to the figure. I recommend it 100%. I really love it, and I think you guys will too. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.